What a bizarre uh, lyric there. <laughs> Anyways, yes, she's 16, apparently. Alex, the answer here, it is April. Where are we at here in the time-space reality in this Earth matrix? Ah, that's right, it's April 16th in the year 2018. And this is uh, an anniversary of something. I'm not really sure exactly what it is. Uh, happy birthday to the father that I haven't spoken to in many, many years. Uh, you know, I noticed, there was, yeah, that's right. There was some sort of little update there. Um, other things, other things that are on the radar, it's tax season. Had to pay my 140 taxes to the, um, to the county as far as, the rest of the tax reality, the rest of the matrix reality, the rest of the grid reality. You know, I've been stepping back from some of that lately. Have you noticed? So yeah, this is uh, now two years now, two years now coming up on living here at the same spot. And I've gone through a lot of moving and, you know, I just started writing again, uh, elements of my, um, elements of my story, trying to get through childhood. You know, there's a lot that took place in the eighties. I mean, a lot that took place. In the 80s. Now, I don't know if you're one of those individuals that also sees that period of 1985, 1986, I was six then, 1987, as a period of great transformation that led, you know, and if we look at even the Mayan time table, timetable, we have these shifts of energy where it actually has nothing to do with the end of the world or beginning of a new age. And it just relates to cycles. And within our own lives, especially if you look at your own life, the high and the low periods, or the periods in which you start a new job or a new relationship, you might notice those cycles in your own life. And the thing that I find interesting about the solar cycles and things of that nature, and I think about the late 80s, uh, and going into the early 90s and, and all the change that was going on in my childhood, you know, that was laying the uh, the early life experiences, uh, even if I didn't understand those experiences at that time, even if at that time I didn't understand why there were a number of things taking place, right? Like the Rodney King uh, riots, like uh, um, other things that were going on during that period. Uh, a rise in gang violence, you know, and re reportings about shootings in North Portland while we watched on the news at home in Aurora, Oregon, as my grandmother went, <laughs> you know, at those reports of the, those, those up in Portland, Oregon, you know, just, you know, the old, the old family back on the, the 40 acres during, during that period and not knowing then that there are cycles of war and peace. And those same cycles of war and peace that we see in our world are manifesting in our own lives down to the micro cosmic level. There are cycles and then there are smaller cycles. There's cycles within cycles, just like there's dolls within dolls. So the cycles within our own life are like the lifetimes within our own life. And, and sometimes documenting your own life story can be a little bit challenging because of all the different dots that are there. So sometimes we just push those memories to the back of our mind if they are uh, memories that are painful, where, where there's unresolved emotional trauma. And I think it can actually help people work through unresolved uh, emotional trauma. And there's a lot of that subconsciously just from being in uh, the post 9-11 world. People traumatized by the world events being told to be afraid. And on the other hand, uh, you know, people are uh, afraid of being marginalized as those that uh, could be marginalized as a threat because of their appearance. And that's another level of fear that people that are in fear of the Taoist uh, may not consider in the post 9-11 world. And so there's various elements of the trauma. So there's a lot that one could take away from learning about the solar cycles and, and how it boosts the energy field and the emotions. 
the diversity of them, the intensity of them, the frequency of them, the highs and the lows. So I was talking recently about the scientists within our own species on a advanced level that are working on rats and mice. And people talk about, oh, how dumb humans are and blah, blah, blah. And yet we're already at somehow, some way, we've gotten to that point where we're already at this phenomenal level of what we can do cloning wise. And just looking at it from a neutral perspective, these leaps forward also follow these cycles, whether we like it or not, <laughs> as we move forward with these cycles, the advances in technology seem to explode as people have been talking about the singularity, but maybe they've been talking about the rise of technology and the march towards singularity and the robot apocalypse without taking the solar flares or the solar cycles and the concept of accelerated evolution or moving forward. And, and whether that evolution or moving forward technologically is a positive or a negative is in the eye of the beholder. Some might see it the age of Aquarius and the new age uh, and maybe uh, discounting, right? They're concerned about the technologies being used to kill uh, people overseas. You know, think about the technology of drones. Gee, I think we're at that level where if we can create technology at a certain level, certainly we can feed the world, not to sound cliche, but certainly we can live in a more peaceful, humane way with these technologies if they were used to serve us and to serve the people of the world and come up with a solution to starvation and come up with a solution to some of these things. See, that is possible. We physically live in a world where we physically don't have to be at each other's throats over a perception of limited resources and space on the planet. And so a lot of the mythos that people believe are only half truths. Sure, there is scarcity of resources because we live in a world where people don't know how to naturally harness resources around them. Or when we live in a world where they want to overregulate us out of existence to where they want us to live in the farm, if you will, the dense population centers, the places in which our emotions are harvested, I would say, from the pain of living in those dog eat dog gender warfare environments. It should be obvious to some people why I would want to live away at this point from cell phone towers and smart meters, not just programs of the system, people, in other words, but to actually live away from something that I believe can actually pull energy itself or affect the human energy field or aura. Smart meters, radio waves, other things that are going on in these urban environments. You don't have to affect every fish in the sea. You just have to affect the overall sea itself. You know, and I'm grateful that at this moment, I can at least step away from that signal. The next step for me, right, in overriding any dummy down that may have unconsciously manifested from overexposure to the internet, uh, for me, the responsibility comes when I'm cutting the internet and what I choose to do throughout the day and the, the type of discipline that's needed to keep things focused on uh, writing, podcasts, uh, books. And honestly, I want to step away from doing videos for a period of time, but I really should just keep at least sharing with you some of these thoughts. And Today's podcast, for example, has a number of different topics. I won't even know where to begin in trying to title these things. And really, I don't even want to worry about it or think too much about the titling or to stay in order and to rather allow things to be a little bit abstract. But if I was to be forced to stay on point and to summarize this, we talk about the cycles in our lives. You know, it's more than just the cycles of the sun and the war cycles of, of conflict and peace, but the cycles within our own lives and periods in which we need to move forward or we are moving forward. And sometimes in order for us to move forward, certain things need to be removed from us, certain obstacles. We may not know why certain things and people, places are being removed from us or why things are, are changing in a certain way. And I don't get deep into astrology. I know that some of the things that I'm talking about is right up that alley. Uh, there's just a part of me that isn't a follower of astrology. However, there's someone that watches this program um, and he lives in Australia and he knows a lot about astrology. He's about the only person that I know that 
uh, will share stuff with me online, feels comfortable doing so, enjoys the program, and also studies astrology. So I appreciate his take, and he has been really accurate for, with his understanding of um, of what's going on and what was going on in March and the heavy energies that we were feeling last March, like literally almost down to a few days. So his understanding of these charts were fairly in line with the intense emotions that I was, you know, I'm thinking the 16th, the 18th, was it coming up on the full moon or the new moon? But the, the greater point is, we may have different like levels of knowledge information. And somebody may look at politics. Somebody may look at astrology. Uh, somebody may look at the solar flares from their perspective. Somebody may look at religion. Somebody may look at, you know, other things we're, we're looking at through our own lens, but there's, there's parallels and there's overlaps and there's non-local awareness, which cannot be controlled in some cases. It cannot necessarily be demonstrated in a lab, you know, to prove someone that the, the, the potential of non-local awareness or psychic awareness is real. It just happens. You know, somebody feels someone staring at them at random. They're not thinking about anything in particular, but they're going to look back and go, you know, that person's coming around the corner. Like, I'll notice that at the supermarket. I'm coming around the corner. And a woman that works at the grocery store uh, who said hi to me before, and I just try to keep to myself, but it's a small town where people like to be in the habit of saying hi to people and if they don't know you. I just like people waving on some of these back hill roads. And she's looking to see who's coming around the corner at the exact second that I'm coming around the corner. Um, I was watching a documentary on uh, Tony Sperano, uh mispronounced his name, but the person uh, depicted by... Uh, Oh, why would I draw a blanket early in the morning? But yes, uh, the movie with Casino and one of the villains there. Why would I draw a blanket at nine o'clock in the morning? He was he was on Home Alone. Wow, I must be on overdrive, like functioning in the other. Uh... It's going to come to me in five, four, three. No, no, not Danny DeVito. He was in Goodfellas. No, no, not Robert De Niro. Joe Pesci. I can't believe that took that long. So it's a documentary about who Joe Pesci depicts in Casino. And right as I was watching this and they're talking about all these different things, I was thinking about Disneyland all of a sudden. You know, and this nostalgia of Disneyland in the 1980s. And it was a documentary about the, uh, specifically the transformation of Las Vegas in the 1980s. And how they, they, they made it more Disneyland-like. And he was about to say that. And they were about to show an image of Disneyland in that documentary. And I'm already typing in Mafia Disneyland. <laughs> Just wouldn't that be crazy if there was, other than Walt Disney and the Masons but like an actual mafia that controlled Disneyland. Uh, just like almost an implanted sensation thought, something that came at random, because there's so many crazy theories and videos on YouTube. And it just so happened, as I was typing in those words, the guy started talking about them turning Vegas into being like Disneyland. And they literally showed an image of the Disneyland uh, castle. And literally like a millisecond before that, I'm thinking about Disneyland. And see, to me, I would interpret this as a non-local awareness that's able to scan and pick up on the information in the video before it's actually being seen. And the, the grander, larger repercussions of this potential abilities of some of us, some of you, certainly I've seen it more than once and it's freaky, is to also pick up on whether something is intentionally fake news or not, whether it's legitimate, just like feeling like the energy of certain websites uh, and whether or not you even put the cursor over certain uh, articles. I believe that that can result in a particular sensation back. Like, oh, this is, um, there's something off about this article. Or just looking at the headline and looking at the source and I'm noticing that this is one of those ways to determine whether anyone or someone has basic intuition. You see certain people that post a lot of stuff that's provably fake. And um, that's not a good sign. Um, some people can't be programmed to think that they're in line with the truth and to be literally connected with the hive mind version of reality that's masquerading as 
uh, quote unquote, air quotes, woke. And then there's something else within us, within some of us, that whether around a person or whether around a certain thing, we just get a sensation whether it's true or it's false. And it's something within us and it's something that we trust. And we can't necessarily explain this to others. You know, how we've had certain dreams or how we've come upon certain certain bits of knowledge. On the day of 9-11, certain people on the planet looked at what was being projected by CNN. And a lot of people didn't believe their eyes because something didn't feel right about it, about the official story, about the vulnerabilities of the United States at that time. Now we're at a period where anything discussing that is flagged automatically. See, they've actually done some serious work to make, um, I don't think they're done yet with their crucifixion of those that question the official story. I was thinking about that more often in the last day. There's something about that. And there's a reason why they had their agents, right, make their documentary films in the beginning. Certain people like Alex Jones that were there, that were there to gain the trust of the, trust of the masses. When in fact they would turn around and, and serve, one could argue, are those same forces of deception operating on another level. Given us change we can believe in to make America great again. And more deception as more wars are catapulted into that same region of the earth, the Middle East. So there's been a part of me that's been viewing reality differently. Just like when I first came across his content, I initially was like, whoa, there's something evil about him. Until I kind of fell into it because I wanted to. And I, I wanted to believe like the poster. And before long, I was, uh, as far as Portland, Oregon's concerned, one of his biggest promoters until things changed later on. And I saw the real Alex come out, the real Alex Jones. And so in my own life, I can look back at those, those things that were accurate that I believe were accurate within me, my own perception. And, and even times in which I chose to look away from those, those warning signs because maybe I didn't trust them or even know there was such a thing as an accurate intuition to a certain degree. And I chose to make a mistake anyways. And maybe to learn, kind of like my own uh, dark ages of the late 1990s, you know, jumping into bad situations that forced me to grow up real quick. It's almost like I chose it. And if I look honestly at many of the major decisions in my life, I did chose those experiences to somehow grow up faster. Somehow it seemed really important to me to grow up really, really fast. And so I did certain things to grow up really, really fast and change my life. And then align with, with something that I believed in, which is this. And how this is done, expressed, seems to also change within the solar cycles. As I'm all over the map here, I might as well cover this. And there was a time in which, in 2004, it was Access Television on Channel 11 every Thursday at 7 o'clock p.m. That was throughout the whole metro area. And there was a time in which that came to an end to where they closed Thursdays due to budgetary cuts. And I lost a larger audience and was pushed to Sunday nights. It wasn't a conspiracy, as a lot of people would like to believe. It was them literally at that time not having the money to be open for Thursdays. But maybe it was just bad luck, and maybe it was. But I've never claimed that it was. And so that was a setback, and within two years, I was leaving Portland. But if I had not felt that my time was done in Portland, I would still be there. And I wouldn't have begun a long process, a painful process, mind you, of traveling to different places within this state of Colorado to find something that was right for me for the moment. And it was even to the point where the money wasn't there as people know that have been following my travels to where I decided to go back to Portland and uh, continue my activism. So I didn't have the money for land then, nor any YouTube AdSense, nor uh, audience support, you know, on a level that would point in that direction. You know, it seems like my rite of passage what was still in transition. And the period came of living in a teardrop camper made with a friend at the time that was situated on top of a $300 Harbor Freight uh, trailer. The color was red. I remember assembling it myself. I was recently having flashbacks. 
to assembling something that would be the platform for my home in the city in which I was born but left with no family. And it's like, did I choose that? And it's like, no, I didn't in my mind choose homelessness. I, I came back to Portland expecting better. But on a deeper level of our psyche, right, maybe on a higher self level, did I go back to Portland to live in that type of destitute to climb myself out one calendar year later, one cycle later, one yearly cycle later? And the answer is yes. Like clockwork, uh, there was a period between April 2014 and April 2015. And by 2015, at the time, I had an online job. I had an RV, and which I still have, but it hasn't been moving in over a year until I have the money to put a battery in it. So for now, it's not movable. Hopefully, that's all that's wrong with it. There, there is a greater threat of forest fires than there's ever been for this particular area and just the general western slope, west side of, of, of the state of Colorado, as opposed to places like Costilla County where it's more desert-like, although it's not really a desert. They just made it one <laughs> through their deforestation and then over-farming and then creating the Rio Grande ranchos and the San Luis Valley ranchos and places like that within Costilla County where people are basically living on contaminated land that's right. You got to be careful. Take a look at the cancer rates in Costilla County, as well as what's going on with code officials. You know, just amazing. People still don't understand. It's like they reach out to me and they're like, "Oh, Alex, I saw your video," and it's like, "Yes," and I made follow-up videos saying, "Don't come here." And it's like they're 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 seeing videos, I guess, from the past to where, I, I guess, it was better days, and and things weren't, you know, and I. I I miss the old days where you can just pull your RV up in that particular county and just not be bothered and wide open spaces. It's a very special part of Colorado. Here is different. This is special, but it's a different special. There's a special special. You know why? It's sacred land. It's ancient Navajo land. So I'm glad I, I paused on this and I want to talk about this rather than Portland. I was on sacred land in Costilla County. We've done a lot of talk about property rights and blah, blah, blah. But there's actually something more ancient about that place that just makes it all the more interesting. And there's also something creepy regarding gray aliens and abductions about that place and rumors about underground bases. And so the spectrum does go from the mystical, oh, wow, the Indians were here. Oh, they did vision quests. Well, that is so cool. To, to like the modern, really? Whoa, that's like creepy. And there are people that have lived in the San Luis Valley that can testify to missing time. That is a sign of abduction. There are people that literally talk about like, and they don't even know if they're showing the signs of alien abduction as they talk about things on the San Luis Valley rave and rant Facebook group. Like literally somebody posted something about the, the UFOs in the San Luis Valley. And I saw somebody commenting that he and his wife experienced missing time. And I'm like, I'm not telling that guy nothing. I don't need to get him worried about nothing. And I remember at one point people were telling me, Alex, you need to get out of there. That place is not normal. And I think she was a listener at the time. Uh, another one that blows in for, for a year. Like, oh, screw this guy. And gone the next year. I think her name was Elizabeth. Her name was Elizabeth. And she was listening in the 2013 era. And she had talked about creepy things in the San Luis Valley. I mean, we're not even getting into skinwalkers yet. We're just talking about just the ships, the lights in the sky, and what's going on. And how does it relate to the government? And see, those things I don't know. But it's like, I'm glad I don't know too much. You don't want to know too much about underground bases because that stuff is real. It's more real than you know. There's a lot of uh, bunk that's out there. But there are actual facilities where there's massive security in New Mexico, in Colorado, in other places that I would never recommend someone trespass. You know, and then start getting too involved. And, you know, it's like we had a golden age, really, <laughs> of uh, to segue, putting whatever on social media. And it's just like a golden age. And people were lying about stuff and making bank on it and YouTube promoting it. And really, YouTube promotes Alex Jones. And a lot of the so-called Alex Jones has strikes again. That, that's, that's old news. That's over. That, this is all manufactured wrestling BS. 
You know, we might as well bring in Vince McMahon playing the devil. Oh, I guess we do. We have, we have, we have the Donald. Making the devil sexy again. It's like, no, don't, don't, let's not, let's not go there. Uh, the archetype of the destroyer. It comes in many forms. But Vince McMahon of the WE is one person that has openly exemplified that, isn't that interesting that both Vince McMahon, you know, founder, head, CEO, owner of WE, you know, from its undertaker to other characters, ongoing uh, satanic ritual, women fighting, women being beat up, being slapped around, you know, that type of mind control. How he goes, you're fired. And like that close relationship with Donald Trump and people don't like go, what if that's like in plain sight? Like, you know, like the way we used to talk back in like the 90s, like the early 2000s when like being a conspiracy theorist was like, you know, see more genuine and cool. We'd be like, look, bro, it's in plain sight. Look, bro. Or during Obama, you know, Obama, Bush handshakes. Look, they're like together, yo. No, no, nobody saw that significant between Vince McMahon and Donald Trump. And like, what does Vince McMahon represent? He represents deception. He represents the man around the ground. Blah, 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 I'm the devil. You know, fire and brimstone. You know, he represents the head of a network that features the, uh, the berating and beating of women. Uh, he is the head of a wrestling network. Right? That will use men the same way that men will use a prostitute. Use them up, right? Kick them out when they're done. Pump full of drugs, pump full of painkillers, right? And then run them like dogs. Like, just you know, just watch for a few years some of the testimony of those. That actually, some people are no longer alive. People like the Ultimate Warrior. But just like the reality behind the scenes, and I was talking about non-local awareness by what I know about just how other things work, as well as secret societies. And just like with a basic level of knowledge about something being more than meets the eye behind the wrestling deaths, some of the wrestlers that have died, and whether it be supernatural related, because there's an abnormally high amount of wrestlers. Now, when you look at things like Jake the Snake Roberts and just the satanic rituals, the things that were written in, and there's like a scene there where he's biting onto the arm of Macho Man Randy Savage, and the snake actually, which was defanged, uh, didn't let go when it should. So that was like actually a traumatic thing for Macho Man Randy Savage, who was already afraid of snakes, to be in a situation where he's he's playing the person bound up in the ropes by Jake the Snake Roberts. He's agreed to go along with being bitten by the snake, but the snake's not letting go, so it's like an extra couple seconds of like... And as a kid, I remember watching that. And as a kid, I remember being imprinted by the violence being displayed on what was then called the WF. And recognizing Jake the Snake Roberts as a Satanist type character. And as an adult, and you can watch now on YouTube, like I can see now how my childhood uh, watching in horror at this evil being displayed on TV and also hearing people talk about, you know, oh, Ravishing Rick Rude being depants by the Ultimate Warrior on TV, how it, it would infect kids at school. That, that they would be really aware of that type of a, a detail that they played up. And so a lot of people like shrug the stuff off. They shrug off the idea of predictive programming. They shrug off the idea of Saturday morning mind control, which is actually the title of a book. They shrug off the idea of the 1980s being full of all this dark predictive programming that, that would lead us to where we are now. You know, there are all kinds of videos featuring wrestling and wrestling clips from the old days that are now all over YouTube. For a while there, um, it seemed like the WE, I haven't put anything up, right? But they put up a, a copyright, not just a normal strike, but it was like a violation. And had a video removed. And it showed the complaint and it showed their little New York headquarters. And I was wondering whether someone saw that personally and then decided to file with YouTube to have it removed. Again, because we have all these other videos that are just displaying 
the WE. But see, my video is criticizing um, the mind control. In clip after clip after clip, you can see women being lifted up and then body slammed. Sometimes by men, sometimes by women. Sometimes a, a white woman being body slammed by a big black woman. And, and uh, to me, that's kind of obvious that they're playing up racial tensions. Would you not say an obese black woman with what may have been a blonde wig? I'm not sure there. Uh, picking up a blonde white woman who's very thin and small, right? And uh, there was some sort of a video that I saw recently on YouTube that was displaying that. Now, though I'm not looking, right, I realized that there's more of what I was talking about 10 years ago in that video that's since been deleted, of which there's no copy, than ever before. Had that video been left on YouTube, perhaps I would have reached a lot more people and got them thinking. And then, what a guy like me does is not just look at what Vince McMahon is doing, I look at the audience. I look at how many women are in the audience. I look at how young the women are in the audience. And I realize, right, in the so-called free world, that's really all about respecting women and actually saving women from other countries, from those evil people. Yes, I see that they are actually being programmed in this modern Viking barbarianism to see their own kind lifted up and slammed over and over and over again onto the mat. I can walk into a bar or I can walk into a restaurant and what is on television in widescreen, it's the MMA. And if you criticize MMA as something that is not genuine martial arts, I didn't say you can't hurt someone with MMA. I'm saying like Freddie Lee, who's a YouTuber who actually uh, received death threats. He had people stalk him, show up and challenge him to fight, right? Because he was doing videos critical of the MMA influence over an already violent society. It's when you take out the discipline, when you take out tenets of honor that might be normally taught by a martial arts teacher and you just teach any random guy how to F some up, someone up as soon as possible, take him to the ground, bash him up, right? That it takes out that element. And you know, it's the modern Cobra Kai from like the movie Karate Kid. And as an adult, I understand this more than ever. And um, even why I parted waves from an old teacher of mine that was more on the MMA side, violent side, street fighting side, than, um, than the thing that I'm actually attracted to, which seems to be ancient and it seems to be within my heart. And, you know, there's elements of maybe the, the more ancient side of martial arts that I can find on YouTube and documentaries about the Shaolin Temple. And I can find YouTubers like Freddie Lee that... Um, seem to encompass that spiritual side, but th there's only a few. Uh, the world that I was born into in the post-1980s, or really post-Bruce Lee era, is a lot of narcissism and ego uh, revolving around the display of martial arts, which is why that's one thing that I choose to leave off this channel, because it, 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 it isn't really in line with, I guess, the, the niche content. Um... And people today, due to the mind control, respond very negatively to such a display. And there are people that have an interest in learning certain things for offensive purposes only. And some people are offensive uh, with their words or with their behaviors with the computers, which is just a microcosmic way of being offensive instead of the defensive. You know, instead of just going back and forth with someone that's actually coming after you on the internet. By being offensive, right? That's the same way as just walking up and kicking someone. Uh, throwing words, throwing thoughts is throwing energy. So for me to be moral, the idea of morality <clears throat> when it comes to martial arts, I think that it's overlooked in today's society. I look, think that it's overlooked in society in general. It's a preemptive society that will actually use, and I can't use the word FF, but false events is what all manufactured events. I can't say, and I'm abbreviating FF. We know how YouTube is now Orwellian. But false events. This is a false event. Manufactured event society. It manufactures events. 
This is the society, the problem, reaction, solution. It will say it's defending itself while actually creating a event in New York and then doing something very offensive. And you think about like what this would look like in, in, in martial arts, like someone walking up to someone randomly on the street and, and faking a punch one way and then slamming them saying, he hit me, he hit me. And then having the other person put into jail. You know, like that that's how it comes across. That's the type of, of bully that our system is right now. That's the kind of world that we're in right now. And so there comes a cycle of time where the strong man meets his match. This is at the microcosmic level. There there comes now who knows how it came about for someone to meet his match. You know, whether it be an act of the creator. And of course, we're talking also analogies of the United States and China and the idea of, well, how did China get so big and how we can reach different conclusions and have different views and theories about how China is rising to surpass the United States. But once that position takes place, and we're not necessarily, right, saying the U.S. bullies China, right, but we're just saying that the U.S. has played a role in destabilizing places around the world. And if you look at the propaganda that's being put out right now, it's not exactly false, right? But I don't think the U.S. did it alone. They still borrowed money from China, so China is complicit. So is Russia in the destabilization of the Middle East. But they're going to be positioned, right, to point their finger at the United States over what happens in that country. That is, uh, that is the hot button issue right now. And so, you know, just like, uh, this brings us full circle to the WF, it's a staged event. And it's a character. It's a heel character that Donald Trump is playing. Oh, no, he went from hero to heel. You see, in the script, you have hero to heel. You can have Hulk Hogan play different roles. You can have Hulk Hogan go from the WF to the WCW. You can have him metamorphosis into Hollywood Hogan, but it's still the same Hogan. He's playing different roles. He has a private life. You see, you have Jim Cornette. He'll talk about the real wrestlers behind the mask. You don't have anyone talk about the real, the real connections between these world leaders and what's really going on. The real meetings with Putin or the real agreements with the oligarchs, because that's where it would be important. Not so much Trump and Putin, but that which controls Donald Trump and that which controls Vladimir Putin, the, the oligarchs or the central bankers or those in control or those that are really in control that are not featured, right, in your average conspiracy rag. Now I understand. Years after years, it's been controlled. They've kept the focus on Bohemian Grove. They want to steer the focus on just these, these buzzwords, Council on Foreign Relations, and steer away from others. The Council on National Policy is a group that some people have said hasn't received enough focus and attention. And that seems to be the case more so now uh, than it did when Barack Obama was the president. A Bilderberg group seems to be a front group, while the real groups were the real plannings between the super state nations, nations like the United States, China, and Russia, and perhaps other other groups of Arab country leaders. You see, there's what we see that's displayed and their councils. And we could see these different councils uh, and unions, the Arab Union, leaders in African Union, European Union. We have various unions that have already been interlocking and engage in globalist policies. But then there's the meetings that you don't know and that you don't see. So we have someone like Hogan who's played different roles and has gone from hero to heel, right? With the Donald Trump Vince McMahon connection, it's in plain sight that it's all a show, that politics are rigged as well. Even to the point where there'll be a tweet from Donald, right? Where it's like, oh, uh, Donald Trump is promoting violence against CNN. When, when CNN, the logo, a logo, not even a human being. Note that. A logo, not even a human being, plastered over the head of Vince McMahon as, as, a, as a CG edit, CGI edit of Donald Trump hitting the CNN logo and beating it up, an act of violence. See, that's manufactured as well. Playing up a fake feud between CNN and Donald Trump. 
What we need is like a Jim Cornette like like insider to the real political right arena that would actually tell us what was really said at that dinner when Alex Jones hung out with the producers of CNN, right? And they did cocaine together, right? Or, or they playing propaganda together. Let's well, say, so, okay, so in 2015, you're going to hit me on this, this, and this, and I'm going to act a fool on this, this, and this, and by the time we get to 2018, blah, 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 and my numbers will look like this because you dropped my name 100 times, and it's like the back and forth promotion. And it's like we live now in a dumbed down America. That doesn't understand that CNN's been promoting Alex Jones the entire time. That there was a reason that Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama joke and laugh about Alex Jones and him calling them devils because of that smell of sulfur. That was millions of dollars worth of advertising. This is the modern idiocracy. The question is, have you prevented it in yourself? What works for you? And see, these are things for people to think about. Because I can tell you there was a time in which I've been duped by a number of things. And I remember there was a big purge of mine in 2014 to where, you know, uh, a lot of people that were my heroes were no longer my heroes. And I saw them for what they were. And there was something that changed in me after 2012. That I wouldn't see alienate people that like the old Alex. Whereas there's something about me that doesn't put up with the same type of victim consciousness. And, and the constant, incessant focus on that which we think is killing us. Oh, the chemtrails. And oh, this. And then when you really get down to it and you live off grid for a little bit, you realize what life's really all about to a certain degree. And is it really all about the government oppressing us? Or is it about those people holding up those ideas that hold up the government that are surrounding us that are the majority? In a world where people falsely think the majority is waking up, whereas they like to shorten the word woke. The majority of the world is not awake. That is not true. If anything, if you've learned anything from me, or at least looking at um, some of my experiences, there was a time in which there was greater compassion for people spreading the truth or trying to make a difference. And now it's something that people make fun of. Those people ending up with problems, stalkers, other issues that dare to go into the truth. I look at the experiences of others. You know, one guy showed up at the, uh, is it Jake Morales? You know, and we may not agree on the same politics. He may be on more of a, a pro-Trump bandwagon, but he still has a right to his uh, viewpoint. So if somebody shows up that he chases away with a baseball bat and he puts that on YouTube. And the guy was acting like he was some sort of you know, uh, shaking his head, going, help me, help me, I'm being targeted, help me, help me, I'm being targeted. It's like, it's like that we're, we're not licensed counselors. Just because like somebody like me or him or somebody maybe put out a, a great video, you know, that may inspire someone to have people running around flopping up and down foaming. I mean, it can happen. I did live in Portland once. Don't forget that. You also might know that I don't live in Portland anymore and I live here now. But there were people that had their own private beefs with the city that were really extreme personalities. I mean, really extreme personalities to where it all came down to their case. And they really needed me to like join their case and their fight that was going on for 25 years. And like, they'll have documents with dust on them and it'll all be about a grand conspiracy and all these names will start coming up and, and then everything will get intense and all of a sudden I notice the guy that's talking to me, he's banging a big steel post into the ground each time he talks and we're in felony flats off 77 Flavel. And I'm thinking, I gotta get out of here. And see, a person like that was the only person that reached out to me when I was without a place to park. When I had nothing but a truck. This is before the teardrop camper. And just the whole place smelled like cigarettes. He's going from one to the other. It's like a big bucket of ashes. It's overflowing. And I'm thinking it's time to go. You know, and as time went on. Oh, then there was that lady I met. What was her name? The one that hated men. That was holding her own conspiracy meetup group. That was weird. That was a weird one. There's a bunch of like old, like, you know, conspiracy junkies, like being led around by this man hater. It's like, oh my God, you know, they just started seeing what's happened to consciousness. This is not something to emulate. This is not something to call evolved. I mean, this is just, uh, if anything, people eating, 
pooping and passing away and maybe not killing anyone while they're involved, but some of their others, <laughs> it's another story. So, you know, people want to debate or not about uh, Nazi Germany and whether so many millions of Jews died. Here's what I can tell you. They're not counting the millions of dead Afghanis and Iraqis anymore. They just keep killing them. Whatever's going on within our own lifetimes and within the period in which I was born is one of the worst atrocities to happen to Western civilization. And the karmic consequences are through the roof. It's, it's like people look at the debt like, oh my God, how can we pay this all? Think about, think about paying off a karmic debt. Think about how do these people pay off that type of a karmic debt for destroying civilizations, not just the cost of those bombs, but what you did to those people and ancient civilizations and documents. And so that's the thing for people to think about that have either supported in their mind, maybe not you, right? But there are people within this society and this world that have pledged their life, right, towards this cause to eradicate a particular people. Okay, and that's what these occupations overseas are all about, while their own government continues to fund these other groups that conveniently keep blowing things up, that cannot be stopped. That's horrible. That's one of the worst things you can possibly do to human beings and then demonize them later when they're running from those same explosives, calling them members of those groups. That's the ultimate false event. Manufacture, that's the ultimate lie against thy neighbor. The ultimate karma consequence is coming to those humans that have courted themselves with that beast. Okay, I was born to document that. I was born to document what happened here on earth. And to do it from a perspective that's not co-opted by either side. So I'm going to come up with a conclusion. We talk about cycles. This is a cycle in which, you know, someone could spread weed killer and all different types. of. That's not going to stop the weeds. But why do we call it weeds? That's not going to stop earth. We can go ahead and put concrete over something. That's not going to stop that plantain from rising up. Why is there a plantain only at one spot on my particular property? And it's over by... The tire. Nature thinks that that needs to be healed. It's bursting up going, okay, there seems to be something uh, unnatural on top of me here. I I'm going to pop up some plantain. And you'll notice other plants will be popping up through the concrete. Have you ever noticed that when you're walking through the streets? I have. It's the power of nature. The power of a seed, whether it be an oak tree or something as simple as a plant. And some of us They're here as souls to teach or share information or ideas that may be scoffed at by today's people, but will be understood tomorrow. We understand that we're part of this natural response to that which is unnatural. We're not alone, and we're a part of a cycle. Some people want to uh, start calling the kids this or that, indigo and crystal and whatnot, and a skip de do and a blah, blah, blah. And it's like, I don't go in that direction. I look at things beyond that box and it is a box but are there people that are born with a destiny with a mission are you one of those people who hasn't yet whether you're 14 listening to this 24 34 44 maybe you haven't yet woken up to your destiny or your truth to then be able to go out and share your truth with others and maybe that's a process you know as they say many are called and if you answer the call and there's a lot of people that think about answering the call and um, they're going to come across information, people, places, and things when they are seeking that information, when they're open to that information. Because seek and ye shall find. And it's an ongoing process to seek. But right now, I've been experiencing the current cycle. And the current cycle follows many other cycles. The current cycle of sharing information with other human beings has changed from sharing human beings with human beings primarily in my community to now sharing them at more random to those people that are getting the updates on YouTube and those of you that are manually coming to the channel without waiting to be told by a machine that Alex Ansari just put something out you know up on the uh, up on the hot tray to be carted out to whatever table ordered the meal you know this isn't this isn't a machine. This isn't flow like a radio station. I put out information 
and I don't do marketing behind it. I don't have a bunch of volunteers sharing that information on Reddit, although that would help. I just allow the information to find those that are looking for the information and just to keep moving. You know, and some people may find some information that they appreciate and they may not appreciate other things. They may strongly disdain other things. That's fine. But we have the freedom, as I say, it's a free country, whether you really believe that or it's just an expression of speech. Uh, but we should have the freedom to believe as we want. I do believe that. In any case, this is the current cycle in time, and it's important to realize that the end of the world isn't here. A new cycle is beginning. But what we're going to do with this energy, with this information, that's up to you. I'm only here trying to help.